switch to our next presenter. Um, so I'm happy to be able to welcome uh, Tim Wilkins uh, to be able to talk about System LV2 to go. Um, Tim is a member of the executive board of the German consulting company OSE, an MBSE coach and an active member of OMG and in cozy communities. He's one of the co-leads of the SysML submission team, which works on the specification of SysML v2 and also a co-author of the SysML v1 specification. Um, so I'm excited to be able to have Tim uh, catch us up to date on SysML v2. Um, and if his graphics are anywhere, what his front page is, this should be a fun show to be able to see. So uh, welcome, Tim. Thanks thanks for joining in, and we look forward to your presentation. Okay, thank you. So I just see that I lost my picture. That's a good start. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, that's the problem. Uh, I, I think I'm... I'm back in the middle. Yeah, there yeah. I am. Okay. Sorry for that. So, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to talk about my hard subject, um, Sysmol V2 at the OSLC Fest. Um, yeah, it's a big topic. And I have around 20, 25 minutes time for it. So, today's to go after a brief overview, uh, a focus on the model data structures, and lastly, a tip on how you can try it out right away. Um, yeah, so, well, this picture shows part of the team which works on the system LV2 in 2017, a long time ago, five years. Um, and the team meets in person four times a year and has several conference calls um, each week throughout the year. So it's a very big time investment for, for the team members. Uh, the team has grown over the time and more have come to the meetings. Um, so this will be or was the, the last in-person meeting before COVID in uh, LA in December 2019. And well, times are changing. <laughs> this was the first in-person meeting after the COVID break in 2021. Uh, fortunately, we, we have had some more since then. So, well, before I pour a cup of this model V2, um, a few quick words about me, very quick. Uh, so, as already mentioned, I'm from OSE, consultancy and training company, headquarter in Germany, in Hamburg, um, and we cover all the hotspots of systems and software engineering, and, well, that's that's me, and I do many things um, about, mainly about modeling, and um, besides others, I am one of the co-developers of Sysmel V1, uh, now 20 years ago, and currently Sysmel V2. But now the more important things. Um, so, but why do we work on system LV2? So the, the motivation. Um, so, well, we have many new challenges in, in engineering. Huh? Our engineering methods and tools have to meet increasingly complex requirements for our sophisticated systems. And we, we cannot build the system of the future with the tools of the past. Uh, so current hotspots here are, of course, you know, the, the digital thread and uh, AI for systems engineering, digital twin, uh, simulation and analysis, uh, which is also part of the INCOSI version 2035, um, model-based product line engineering, model interoperability stuff, um, more precision, which is required for, for simulation stuff, and so forth. Um, well, and to the point, no, the, the systems engineering modeling language of the future should not be based on a 30 years old modeling language created for object-oriented software development. Um, no, the 30 year old modeling language is UML, which is the foundation of system LV1. And there are many small and large issues behind this statement, uh, which we are well, increasingly feeling in projects. Um, yeah, so, well, who's responsible for, for, for the system? Uh, well, it's the object management group. And uh, they are responsible for system LV1 and not for system LV2. And they are responsible for many other standards. Uh, only five others I mentioned here on this slide, but there are over 250 standards um, in the OMG um, environment. Um, well, actually, the development of system LV2 already started in 2009. 
um, with a request for information. That means the, the users of System LV1, the industry, uh, were asked what they would expect from a new version of the language. So what works well with System LV1, what is missing, uh, and so forth. Uh, this was still very, very early. And after that, there were discussions, uh, of course, again and again. But the actual start to prepare System LV2 was 2014. And um, since then, we did many workshops, um, and which resulted in the so-called request for proposal in 2017. So a list of requirements for the next generation modeling language. Um, the development of System LV2 officially takes place outside of the OMG in the System L submission team, SST. And the OMG is waiting for the final submission, which is planned for the first quarter next year. And if System LV2 is adopted by the OMG, it will be developed into um, the final standard um, in a finalization task force. And this can take up to two years. So we can expect System LV2 to be officially published uh, latest uh, the first quarter in 2025. In parallel, of course, the tool vendors can already develop tools and project can already use the language, uh, but it's well, it's a, it's a beta version. No? And well, for example, I'm even already working as a consultant in some companies that are planning the introduction of System LV2. So it's already a topic today for some organizations. Um, well, about 2000, uh, 2000 no, no, uh, 215 people are from 85 organizations are members of the SST team uh, working on the system v 2 specification. That's a really a large team. So compared to system LV1, uh, there were only 25 organizations and mm, maybe also 25 people or so, and uh, only 15 active people or so, something like that. Uh, the SST team is not, well, it's not a formal organization. Uh, it's a group of people who are passionate about this topic. Uh, system A. Uh, such a big team needs uh, structures, of course, uh, and there are six different tracks uh, for different aspects with track leads. I lead together with uh, Yves Banar from Airbus, the track that works on the transformation from System V1 to System V2, which is also a part of the System L, um, V2 release. And well, anyone can view the current state of System LV2 at uh, GitHub. And besides a pilot implementation, there are mainly six documents, uh, specifications, but they are always hard to read. It's not the best reading. Um, so therefore, especially the hint, uh, chapter seven uh, in the System LV2 specification document is well readable and explains the, the language concepts. And so are also the two introduction documents about the notation of System LV2. So these are good starting points, I would say. So let's have a look on, on, the, on the language architecture. So I, I won't show you all the elements there, how to model requirements and parts and breakdowns, etc. and so forth. That's it's not enough time for that. Um, and I think here in the OSLC community, it's in particular of interest how the architecture looks like, how the data structures uh, looks like, and how does it work. So the architecture of, of uh, System LV2, as for many other modeling languages, consists of three pillars, um, the, the concrete syntax, the abstract syntax, and the, the semantics, so the meanings of the, of the things. And the most familiar phase of System L is of course the diagram. Um, some people are even surprised that there's a data structure behind the diagrams and they only know the, the pictures. Um, so also Sysmal V2 has, of course, a graphical notation and there are well, very many similarities to Sysmal V1, um, but there's no good reason to do it completely differently. No? So uh, there are still boxes and, <laughs> and lines. Um, and experts of System LV1 will probably recognize here a few new things, so some new relationship symbols and, and so forth. But what is really new is that there will also be a textual notation. Um, here on the left side shows the same model in a textual notation. And 
here it is important to emphasize that the textual notation is also just a view on the model data as well as the graphical notation so and as well as most graphical notations it's not complete and there's more data in the model um, and it's not uh, shown here yeah but what's what is behind the scenes um behind the scenes is the abstract syntax so the structure of the model elements uh, is defined by the abstract syntax um, so only a small part of this abstract syntax specification is shown here so on the left side we have a forest fire observation drone from the from the previous simple example which is a part usage model element and it's defined on the right side and the part usage element is a special item usage uh, it has some associations to other elements and so forth now that defines the the abstract syntax of yeah the, the data structure of of this model element and we have uh, four architectural layers of which three are shown here so the system lb2 model element part usage is specified at the level m2 um so level m2 represents the elements that specifies the elements on the layer m1 so for example the part usage specifies the model element of our part drone here or the first prior observation drone and but uh, and just as the model elements on m1 are defined by elements on m2 with the same relation further down so the elements on on m1 define the elements on m0 and m0 is outside of um of the model uh it represents the the real element so the the real drone or uh, a virtual drone or, uh, to be built drone no? um system lv2 is based on kernel the kernel modeling language uh kernel is well it's a modeling language to create modeling languages so and a big new thing is here system lv2 is not based on uml anymore no? system lv2 is based on kernel and kernel covers well common concepts like features memberships namespaces things like that and system l v2 covers systems engineering concepts for example the concept of parts which is a system engineering concept and a part usage is finally a specialized kernel feature you can see this on the right side it's a specialized item usage and so forth and at the end of this chain we have the feature and well kernel could also be used to define other modeling languages so very likely we will publish it finally kernel as, as a separate standard so it will not be passed also as well v2 um, and it can also be used for example to create a uml version 3 or bpmn version 3 or any kind of other new languages um so if you're already familiar with uh system or uml architectures this will sound familiar to you with this layers and so um but the the one exciting new thing is here that um both kernel and system l provide model libraries and the kernel and system lv2 libraries define the semantics and structures for the m0 layer and so they are on the m1 layer the same layer where the user models are on in our example the, the force fire observation drone so don't worry uh, as a modeling user you must not care much about them the, the tools implicitly set the relationships um at least for for these examples here um so for example our first fire observation drone in the lower right corner implicitly subsets the system lv2 library parts which is a base feature for all part properties and, and subsetting system lv2 is, is a kind of specialization and parts which is a part usage element uh, now we are on level m1 
specializes other library elements, which finally are based on kernel library elements. Uh, here it's objects. So objects is um, a feature that represents all the objects. So that happens in, in, in the background. Um, the library, by the way, is also the, part, um, the, the point where we do language specific extensions, what were the, the profiles and the stereotypes in system LB1. So we have one more layer. Um, I mentioned four architecture layers at the beginning. So here's the missing one layer M3 represents elements that specify um, the M2 elements. So the, and the layer M3 is in system LB2, the meter object facility, MOF, which is also the foundation for system LB1 or respectively UML. Um, and the well-known interchange format XMI is based on MOF. So also system LB2 models can be serialized to XMI. Uh, however, there are additional interchange formats. Huh? Um, so we, we get XMI for free because system LB2 is based on, on MOF. Uh, and one of the other interchange formats is, for example, a JSON-based format. Um, so I mentioned, oh, sorry. Uh, let's uh, skip that part. Um, yeah, finally, um, so you can touch system LB2 and not only watch my slides or other presentation, uh, there is also a pilot implementation. So you can already use system LB2. Um, the pilot implementation or the purpose of the pilot implementation is to have a proof of concept of the system LB2 specification. So we, we need this pilot implementation internally in the SST team to develop system LB2. Um, and of course, we also use it to, to present that to the outside to, to get feedback from the community. Uh, so it's developed by the system L submission team. And well, it's uh, based on, on Eclipse um, or Jupyter Lab. So you can have a, can use both environments. Um, it contains a textual editor and graphical views. There's no graphical editor. We don't need a graphical editor for our proof of concept. And it's, well, we don't have the resources to develop graphical editors. If we had the resources, well, there would be a graphical editor too. Uh, it's a public license. Um, and important what it is not, well, it's not a system LB2 tool for industrial usage. I already got feedback from some project. Oh, the performance is not so good. And this is not so good. And this is missing. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, the purpose is proof of concept um, and not to have a real system LB2 modeling tool. Well, how to get it? It's on GitHub. You can download it um, and install it then yourself. Um, and but if you have problems installing Eclipse or Jupyter environment because you're not familiar with these technologies um, or you're not allowed to do that on your PC, uh, you can use the, the ready to use system LV2 lab, which is the system LV2 pilot implementation based on Jupyter lab. And but it's provided as a free, completely free online service for, for the community without any marketing, merchandising stuff. Uh, it's hosted by my company, but enabled by the community. Uh, the community creates, or the SST team created the pilot implementation. Uh, another person in the community uh, I've never met in, in real life. I only know him from, from LinkedIn, um, created a Docker container and so forth. So, and then all puzzles um, fits together. And finally, we, we had this service. So, um, it's it's open, no registration, nothing. And well, as long no misuse happens, we already had some misuses. So some people misused this service for uh, Bitcoin mining. Uh, we, we were able to close all these uh, security uh, leaks, but uh, if something like that happens in the future, we have unfortunately to shut down the service. And well, save your data if you use it. Uh, we regularly restart the server, for example, for an update, uh, and then everything will, will be cleaned you know, because we have no user accounts. And so um, it's not, not possible to store the data persistently over a long time there. That's the disadvantage of this simple service. You can reach it here, sysmalv2lab.com, and it looks like this. 
Um, but it, you get always the, the user interface or the, the open uh, windows that uh, the user before you has left. So it looks always a little bit different, sometimes a little bit chaotic. Um, yeah, so, well, 10 minutes, five to 10 minutes left. Um, I'm almost at the end. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Now the, the famous uh, last things, uh, not one more thing, in this case, two more things, very briefly. Um, the system we want to be transformation, which I think is important because many companies had a lot of investments in system v one and now there's a new language. Um, and this is maybe two API. Yeah, I already mentioned it. So just a quick note, there will be a transformation from system v one to system v two. Um, so at, at least the transformation rules, how to map a system v one element to a system v two element will be part of the system v two specification. Uh, and there's also a pilot implementation available, which is not publicly available um, due to some reasons. Um, so it's implementable and uh, hopefully in the future, there will also be then, uh, tool vendors who implement this transformation. And the other one is um, the system LV2 API. I think that's, well, that's really one of this one more last thing thing. Um, that's really big. It's a game changer. Um, uh, and it's probably the most exciting point also for you because, well, this is also about OSLC. So system LV2 gets an API. Now that's, that's really, really cool. Uh, so platform specific implementation of the API that are the rest, OSLC and others are, are possible or available. And well, you are familiar with APIs as an OSLC community, so you, you, you know what this means. No? And if you start, it's, it's really game changing. Um, so some, some scenarios, no? um, um, any engineering tool can access a system LV2 model independent of this um, system LV2 tool, um, as long as the tool provides the, um, the API. So any engineering modeling tool. No? Um, so in addition to, to the classic candidates, uh, Miro, for example, could also access a model and display the parts of the breakdown structure as cards on the Miro board and can also save changes back. Um, uh, one or two years ago, I, I, I did a small project, a pilot implementation of that, and it works. Well, it's great. Um, Excel, the famous engineering tool, can also um, get uh, system LV2 data and write it back. That's also possible and, and so forth. So, well, there are many great uh, scenarios. And well, conversely, every tool can theoretically pass on its, its own data as system LV2, as long as the API is implemented. Well, it's like a facade. Uh, and this could, for example, use a system LV1 tool to offer the model externally as a system LV2 modeling tool. So this could be one migration option um, in a mixed system v1 and v2 world. Um, internally, uh, the system v1 tool would then have to implement, for example, the system v1 to v2 transformation uh, uh, somewhere we need the mapping. Um, well, that was the last big one more thing thing. And I'm good on time. That's very good time for questions. I'm at the end. So thank you for your attention and enjoy your cup of system LV2. If you have any questions, we have maybe time now and you can contact me in the Slack channel or on LinkedIn or write me an email or what, whatever you like. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Tim. I really appreciate it. And we have lots of questions that are floating around oh. here. So you, <laughs> you, you sparked Spark some conversations here. So we'll we'll take a few minutes, a few questions, um, and and be able to pick your brain a little bit more during this. Um, one of the questions that came up, and 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 this is is wonderful having cross community type type engagements like this because it, get, it gets people that are focused on uh, tool integrations, understanding what's going on in the in the modeling world. Uh, one of the questions uh, that came about is um, how much can uh, system L2 be extended or how much is it intended to be extended? Like 
adding additional uh, relationship types. Uh, and I appreciate the, the, the requester saying likes OSLC Fest as an example uh, relationship type. Um, can we do that? And is it similar to, to what we've done in previous versions? Yes, yeah, you can do that and much better as in uh, system LV1. Um, so there are some issues with the stereotype mechanism. So you can extend the language, you can extend um, every model element like parts and requirements and so forth, and also the, the relationships. And oh. um, can, in the, for the textual notation, for example, you can introduce your own keywords. So it looks really like a domain specific language. Uh, there are some examples around, for example, for safety. Um, so you have safety terminology in the textual syntax. So that's quite nice. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's good to hear. Um, another question was around, uh, I think, some clarity about the, the Jupyter Lab and whether or not it can be run locally. Is that Jupyter Lab that, that, that your team's hosting, is that just an implementation of the... Um, uh the 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 version you can run locally yourself or is is that something different? yes no it's it's the same so if you download the system v2 release from from github um there's um, a pdf that explains how to install uh, jupyter lab locally and uh but it's it's quite easy and then it runs locally yeah it's the same what we do is we we, we use the pilot implementation create a docker container and run it on a server okay okay Sounds good. Um, I will avoid asking the question, but I think we're all intrigued by this of, of the question of, of whether or not uh, system L, uh, V2 is expected to be implemented by uh, Cameo and Rhapsody by 2025. I think that's a vendor related question that we'll throw out to those vendors to be able to start answering. Um, if you have an answer, but I don't expect that, that you're allowed to be able to say whether or not those vendors are supporting that, but um, I know that there's anticipation yeah. for this. So I, so most of the tool vendors have already announced uh, that they were working on Sysma V2 implementations. Um, I have a list um, I can provide later on the Slack channel, the link to it, where I collect all the Sysma V2 modeling tools that are already known. Um, so, but I don't know the roadmaps. Okay. So I, I, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> yes, yes. As, as, as a vendor, <laughs> myself, I, I know I, I always, when I'm talking about integrations, I'm like, well, that tool vendor shared with me their roadmap, but I can't share it with everybody else. Yeah. That's not my right. So, <laughs> understandable. Um, Just had to be able to ask it because it was out there. Um, And then uh, I think that there's one other question that is, and we'll let the other ones kind of go, uh, go back to either Slack or, or uh, directly with you. And that's around um, configuration management and SysML v2 and its support for OSLC. So the OSLC API support, does that include configuration management as part of it? And what what is the granularity concept within, um, within SysML v2 for those model elements? Is that flexible by tool vendor or is that actually mandated in the standard? That's a good question. And I must admit, I'm not so much familiar with the OSLC implementation of the SysML v2 API. So we, we started with the REST API. Um, so I use mainly that one. And there's also an OSLC implementation now available, um, but I don't know the details. I can look it up or at least can point you to information where you can find it. Uh, okay. Can do this uh, this lecture now. Okay. Uh, All right. I that, can add the world here. Uh, ah, yeah, run. I'm, I'm close yeah. to that, so we won't. Yeah. So there is a mapping. There, there is an OSLC API. Essentially, there is a mapping from the native SysML v2, which is based on REST, and and there is a configuration management model inside SysML v2, which is essentially using the, uses the same set of concepts like in Git. So we have things like commit, branches, tags, all that stuff. And then we mapped it to OSLC. Uh, we have some areas where the mapping uh, is a bit uh, challenging, but uh, overall there is a mapping between the OSLC configuration management concept. So there is some area where it's trivial, like, like stream is in, streams in OSLC are mapped directly to, to branches in, 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 in the native uh, V2. Uh, config management concepts or tags are mapped to baselines. Well, some areas where we are, we are still discussing is how to map 
the concept of commits. Uh, yeah. uh, but the, the, there is a mapping on the idea that if you if you want to use an OSCC uh, API using the OSCC GCM concept, you should be able to do it. Okay, that, 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 that's okay. great. So, um, Tim, thank you so much for, for sharing with us what's going on with System LV2. I, I know that's a hard topic to summarize and you did a great, great job. <laughs> Um, and I'm glad that you had the the uh, the ability to be able to answer our random questions that were at the end to be able to kind of uh, illuminate more details for us. So I appreciate that and um, appreciate everybody asking questions. Our presenters today, um, behind the scenes, uh, Jad and Andrew, who were doing all the technical uh, challenges to be able to get all of our presenters in here. It's been a, a good show today and I appreciate everybody uh, spending time. I do encourage you to uh, come participate uh, Wednesday and Thursday this week at the same time. Uh, we have great sessions coming those days as well. Um, so uh, unless I have any of my co-hosts that uh, like Iran who want to say anything more, appreciate everybody's time today and glad you could join us. Yeah, the only thing I want to add that tomorrow you will be able to see Robert presenting presenting himself, so that's a good. Uh, yeah, yes, I will be presenting tomorrow, so you can go get your cup of coffee when I'm presenting tomorrow. Um, the 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 level of capability the presenter showed today uh, means that I have to have my A game on tomorrow. So uh, it, it's it's been a great experience today. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, and maybe one more word is tomorrow. The way we we partitioned the day, so the first day was more from a. Uh, user's perspective, as you saw, a whole bunch of users today, but tomorrow is more vendors, uh, vendors day. So you'll hear from a whole bunch of vendors, uh, including uh, Sodius and, and PTC and, and IBM and, and, and MID and others. I probably I don't remember all of them. So it's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow as well. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you, everybody. I think we're going to close the session today uh, and uh, we will catch everybody tomorrow. So thank you so much. Take care and have a good uh, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.